Who likes fashion? Who's interested in the future? <laughs> good, good. Well, I'm a fashion designer, but maybe not like you think a fashion designer is. We'll see. Oh, you've gone forward already. When I was growing up, I was a really big science fiction fan. So I was really into Star Wars and Star Trek. And I thought the future, the design of the future was going to be so exciting. So I thought that we might all be living in houses that look like this. This house is made from polyester plastic. And it's made so that you can make it anywhere in the world and position it anywhere you want it to be. If you lived in this house, what do you think your car would look like? Anything like that? This, this is a car that was designed 44 years ago. This is a Ferrari Modulo, and it was a concept car. But when I was a kid, I thought this was the coolest thing because the whole roof slides forward. So just getting into this car is a major adventure. And what are you going to wear if you drive that car? I don't think jeans and t-shirts really work. I think what you need to be wearing is something like the 1960s fashion designers thought we'd be dressing. So these are people like Pierre Cardin, André Courage, Paca Raban. These designers gave us a picture of what they thought in the 1960s we'd be wearing in the future. They were working with things like molded plastic and synthetic fibers and vinyl. But all those materials were based on an oil industry, a petrochemical industry that gave us synthetic materials. When I had a childhood dream of the future, I thought this plastic, fantastic future was what was going to be happening. But in fact, that's not really what happened, is it? You might be more familiar with this. That wasn't in my future dream as a child. But that's what's happened with all those plastics that we were designing. So we know we need to solve this problem. And if you're a designer today, you need to be thinking about the kinds of materials that you're going to work with. So I became really interested in design, and I became a designer, but I was still really excited about the future, and I wanted to see a vision of the future that was more positive than this. I wrote a book about the future of fashion, but not what we're going to be wearing next year, but what you might be wearing in 50 years from now. So how do you find out what you're going to be doing in 50 years' time? You don't ask a designer. <laughs> Go and ask a scientist. So one of the most interesting people I met was a biologist. And I said to him, OK, I'm on a mission. I want to discover what the future of fashion is. And he said, well, you could grow it. What? What do you mean you could grow it? He said, well, you have microorganisms like bacteria and yeast, and they can give you textile fibers. Not like cotton that grows in a field, but these living microbes can live in a liquid and make you a fabric. So this blew my mind. It's like, what do you mean? What does that look like? Can we do it? So instead of working with this, rolls of fabric, I started to work with these guys. So these are bacteria. They spin threads, but the threads that I'm working with are no longer visible. These are invisible. You have to look under a microscope to see what's going on there. So instead of thinking about materials that come from oil or from a plant in a field, I think about clothes and recipes. I think about working with living microbes and this is a recipe for a jacket. So we've got sugary green tea. Well, green tea, you add some sugar, and then you add some microbes. You give it a little bit of time, and we have a jacket. And I'm just going to show you very quickly how that works. Oop. 
if our movie runs, I'm going to try and show you the film. Okay. So this dark patch that you can see at the bottom there, that's a living organism. It's also called a mother. So it's a mix of bacteria and yeasts, and they're feeding on the sugar in the tea. And as they eat the sugar, they're spinning tiny, tiny fibers that all stick together. And the more they stick together, they form layers. And after some time, you get this really thick mat on the surface. I'm going to show you, let's, can we skip to the next slide? So in my design studio in London, I don't have rolls of fabric. I have bathtubs of sugary tea. Let me see if we can get to that. There you go. So when I start to, to create a garment, this is what I set up. So I have a bathtub with some sugary tea. I put my living organisms into the tea, so in go the bacteria. And then we have a sensor that checks the temperature. So it keeps the same temperature all day round. And then two weeks later, you can see the material forming on the top of the bath. Didn't do anything to it, it didn't need any light. It just sits there and it grows, and it grows you a sheet of material. When I'm happy with how thick it is, I wash it. So it's just been washed out, and then it's laid on a wooden sheet outside so that you can dry it. And when it's wet, it can be about two centimeters in thickness. But once all the water has evaporated, it goes down to less than a millimeter, less than half a millimeter. And depending on the recipe you use and how you grow it, it feels, it can either feel like a, a paper or like a leathery texture. So it's like a vegetable leather. And that means that you can cut it out and you can sew it like you would a more ordinary fabric. So this is a picture of a jacket which was completely grown in this way and hand sewn together. And what you can see here is it coming out of a liquid vat of indigo dye. So this is being colored. And then that's the finished jacket. So this jacket was grown in liquid just using bacteria, just using microbes. And that means, hi. Oh, I knew they were going to ask that. I'm afraid not, no, because this jacket right now is in my studio, and this is several years old. So that's what I'm going to say, is that this is biodegrading, because it's an organic material, and it's been traveling around the world for a very long time, and many people have touched it. It's beginning to, to, to biodegrade. So that's a good thing, because if you don't want it anymore, you can put it with your vegetable peelings, and it can just disappear back into your garden. But imagine this. So instead of throwing your clothes into the washing machine with some soap, what instead if you put your clothes with some new microorganisms, with some new bacteria, and then you added some nutrient so instead of washing your clothes, you fed them. What if some of the bugs that you put in there ate all the dirt, so it was getting clean, and then some of the other bugs started to grow onto the surface of the garment? So actually, if you got bored with the shape of your jacket, you could get it to regrow into a different shape. Think about what you would then turn it into. So now, my future visions as a designer are all about living materials and how we can use things like microbes to make things for us which are natural, which can be biodegraded, but that we can start to think about how we might regrow, reshape things. And my background is fashion, so I'm talking about clothes, but this could be anything that you can think of that you could design. Another question. <laughs> T 
to get something which feels like leather takes about two weeks. Two weeks. And to regrow, they would start to regrow instantly. So within about two to three days, you would start to see it changing again. So other people are doing amazing things in a, in a similar vein, not, not always with microbes, but for example, this is a silkworm. And we think of, you know, you might, you might have seen a silk scarf or something that your mother or grandmother or someone is wearing. But silk doesn't have to be that kind of fiber. It can also come as a liquid or a powder. And if silk comes as a liquid or a powder, you could put it into a 3D printer and you could make the heel of a shoe or a pair of sunglasses. But it's from silk. So it's not like you've ever seen it like before. And there are guys who are taking the waste crop of carrots that people don't want because they're funny shapes, and they're turning it into something like carbon fiber so that you can make something tough, like a skateboard from carrots. If you could take some kind of organic material that you find in the natural world, what would you make with it? I, I would like one of these. I would like to take the shell that you find, the mother of pearl that you find in a shell, and I'd like to turn that into my iPad. How did you get here today? Did anybody come on a bicycle? Okay, so you wore one of these. Maybe. <laughs> well, the thing about these biomaterials, growing materials, is that this is just the beginnings of what we're going to see for the future. But these kinds of materials, things that you can grow, are also being explored by scientists because we can add new functions into things. So you can add beneficial things. You can give things properties that in the natural world they didn't have. And that's called something like synthetic biology. So if you came here today wearing one of these style hats, it was probably made from plastic, from oil, from those petrochemical materials that we saw way back. But imagine instead a future where design of materials is made by people like this. There you go. Thank you very much. Anybody got any questions? <laughs>